We're going on a last minute overnighter to the cabin. Not our cabin, it's a cabin actually that's just been built on public land. We don't know who built it, but we've been there a couple times. Uh, we haven't been there in a couple of years just with, uh, I'd love to say COVID is an excuse, but that's really not an excuse to get out to a wilderness cabin. We just haven't been there in a couple of years. So we're headed out for the night now, literally made the decision a couple hours ago. We have Bentley in the back. Bentley, hey, do you want to go camping? Do you want to go camping? He's probably now looking for the campsite. <laughs> you can't say that to him unless we're like on our way because he gets too excited. Anyway, prime bear season. So we're hoping to see what we can see and fill our last tag. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the drive. Come closer. Weird, eh? What do you think it is? I don't know. My guess is it's probably edible. But. <laughs>
boggy. to the turnoff for the cabin and this is our road in if you can see <laughs> we know that this uh, entrance can be a bit tricky but being just June 2nd obviously this is still the beginning of the year and so clearly no one's been up here yet I mean it's not unsurprising to have to use a chainsaw but we're dealing with some pretty, pretty rough conditions. There was a massive windstorm in November that uh, I think winds reached 120 kilometers an hour, and we're really seeing a lot of effects of that out here. Just huge, huge trees down. So the road into the cabin was not exempt. Some fun 4 by 4 ahead of us. The road, ladies and gentlemen. And today it is the road less traveled. Look at this. Just huge trees down the whole way. This is going to be a... Could be a couple hours of removing timber and it's just pouring rain. <laughs> I don't know if you can see Rhett in the distance there but there's probably a good 15 downed trees right here. Yeah, that's a lot of work. We're just coming out for the one night so <laughs> This is a big commitment for one night. Here we are coming up to the cabin. You can see the green roof over there. Just this alone, like six feet of road, four trees. Good gravy, this road's gotten bad. Well, there it is. Again, we didn't build this cabin, it's just on public land. We've just utilized it a few times. That is a, not something that we could do in a couple hours. Hey. Yeah. Do you think it's worth staying one, the night? Two, one, two, three, four. There's four logs here. Let's count them on the way back. There's logs that are ready to come down too. All this could go. June <laughs> second. Uh, so what did I say? So we've decided to cut our way through the road. We'll see how far we get. I think we counted 18 or 20 trees on the way back. 
Um, yeah, let the adventure begin. This is the cabin. Pretty small. A lot of people would probably just call it a shed. Uh, inside's fairly rustic. Old couch. Bentley. Stove's actually pretty great. We've cooked on it multiple times, but there's just simply a little rustic table and a bunk. People do write their names and such when they come here, so you'll see that uh, in 20. 18, Rhett was here. And seven years. Seven years. And the last time we were here, we put our names above the door. I think that would have been 2019, if I remember right. But everyone usually keeps it fairly clean. A few pots and pans to use. People do try and leave dry wood, which is nice, but we noticed the stack was really, really low this time. And I'm noticing someone actually left a box of fresh water with a date on it. So that's kind of nice. Who knows what's actually in it, though? So it is on a little lake. Every time we come here, we look for the canoe across the lake because there's like a little canoe that's been abandoned on the other side of the lake. And then we talk about going across and getting it, so it doesn't look like I can see it, but anyway. We always talk about uh, where this cabin came from, who built it, why it's here, and... I think what we've come to the conclusion of or what we think is correct is that when they were clear cutting and logging, we think some of the loggers might have built it because there is like a little fence along the perimeter from downed trees. So that's kind of what we think. We don't think anyone else would have the initiative to do that. But uh, yeah, pretty rustic cabin. Rhett's been coming here for seven or eight years. Every time we come, it's empty. We luck out every time. So we call it the secret cabin, although there are a handful of people who know where it is, but we always just refer to it as the secret cabin. So we're only here one night, managed to get that road cleared, so anyone else coming up can uh, be 
saved that work. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get settled in and maybe catch you back at dinner. Hey, Bentley. Are we at the cabin? Hmm? At the cabin? What's in there? Bentley. What's in there? Don't roots out. Get them out. He's a good boy. Are you getting the mouse? You want to go see the fish? Where are the fish? Hmm? To go see the fish? Come on, go see the fish! Are there fish out there? Hmm? Are there fish out there? Hey, what do you think? What do you think? Are there fish? <laughs> oh, Bentley! Stay here! That was so close! Did you see that fish? Hmm? Yes. Yeah.
wash, natural car wash. Oof, that looks super fresh. I can't believe how light they walk, there's no tracks. Well, our one night at the cabin has not afforded us a bear or some morels, which were kind of the two things we were keeping an eye for out here. Uh, but the day is going to end pretty fantastically regardless, because he might have a little mud on his boots, but he's taking me uptown tonight. And there may be a little mud on the tires, but they're gonna shine with me up inside. Definitely one of my favorite parts of the set. Hope you guys enjoy it too. This is called Somebody Somewhere.